Hey everyone, this is Phil. Welcome to my Q&A. So in this video, I'm going to answer some questions uh, that I found on our Q&A contest. To start, a lot of people asked me to describe the founding of the business and how I got into cubing, so I'll quickly answer that. Uh, we started this business in 2011. Uh, this was, was started by two cubers who went to college. And uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to, to do this because there was a lot of room in the industry to, to grow a business. Uh, I got into cubing because uh, I was actually pretty bored after applying to college and a group of my friends thought, you know, let's do something completely ridiculous and competitive. And uh, I was the only one crazy enough to continue, so here I am. Tim asks, head of cubicle, sorry I don't remember your name, what's your main 3x3? So for me, uh, my two-handed main is any form of Volk 3M. I like the Angstrom one and the standard one's pretty good. Uh, and for one-handed, I like the GTS 2M Lite. I'm Phil, by the way. Daniel asks, what's your first job? Uh, my first job is, uh, I was actually a violin teacher. I taught violin performance and music theory to a lot of students in central Jersey. Logan asks, what is the greatest feeling while doing your job? Uh, the greatest feeling for me when I'm doing my job is to know that a lot of the hard work that I'm putting in, uh, in the background is actually being released to the public and being useful to people. So. For example, we spend a lot of time planning on how to design a lube and, you know, what it does to your cube and we spend a lot of time testing it on a very variety of products and watching that lube hit the market and seeing people enjoy the lube and benefit from it is really rewarding. Felix asks, what keeps you going when it comes to researching more hardware? Uh, for me, uh, what keeps me going is I'm a cuber. I get excited every time I open a new package for a cube and I definitely identify with uh, the, the need to get better and better with hardware. And so that's why we spend a lot of time developing it. It's because it makes us personally excited and we understand that it also makes a lot of people personally excited. It's really cool to us. David asks, do you have to be fast at cubing in order to be employed here? And uh, my answer to that is you don't have to. It certainly helps you do your job if you understand speed cubing and the market and its people. but. I feel like speed cubing is something that you can learn, and uh, if you set your mind to it and you immerse yourself, you can really learn the trends and generally what the market's about uh, enough to, to do your job. A lot of people here don't have too much cubing experience. To them, you know, this is just a job. If you work in a warehouse and you pack cubes, it's the same thing as working in an electronics warehouse and packing electronics. Uh, for the people that do marketing and social media and all that stuff, they have much better understanding of cubes and it really helps them do their job. Jacob asks, do you have hobbies other than cubing? And uh, yeah, I have I have tons of hobbies. Maybe not too much time to pursue them, but I used to play classical violin. I, I still really like to do that and I'm interested in music generally. Uh, I played competitive tennis and I'm just uh, starting to play again. Uh, that's really fun. And uh, occasionally I PC game. Uh, that's cool. And outside from that, I like cooking. Uh, that's been something I've been doing recently and it's pretty cool to cook yourself a complete meal uh, for a really good price, and uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Gustavo asks, what did you study and how does it relate to the cubicle? So for me, I studied music business, and then I studied law, and the business part is, is pretty straightforward. It, it helps me make better business decisions, and it helps me understand how a business runs, and it helps me understand my role in how to make that run better, and uh, the law thing, I consider myself very lucky to have studied law, given what's what's been happening recently. Chelsea asks, do you play League of Legends? If so, what do you main? Uh, I actually do play League of Legends. Uh, I main ADC, and my most played champs are Jinx, Jin, and Bane. Ayub asks, what's your biggest piece of advice to a teenager who is just starting life? Uh, my biggest piece of advice to you is to be open-minded to as many opportunities as possible. You're still at a stage where you can choose a lot of the paths for yourself, so just be open-minded and learn about things before you say no to them. I think that's really important. Rigoberto asks, a lot of people say that the only way to go through life is to work a white-collar job, like being a doctor or a lawyer, and he asks, what's your opinion on this? And uh, my, my view on this is, do what makes you happy. Uh, certainly, being a doctor or a lawyer is one way to, to make a living, and I mean, it's obviously a pretty good way of living, but uh, it comes with its own stressors and responsibilities, uh, as do as do most jobs. And so, my my biggest piece of advice is to is to pick whatever makes you comfortable and and go from there. There are many roles that are not 
you know, doctor lawyer that you can grow comfortably in and uh, live a happy life. Brayden asks, what's your favorite song? Uh, my favorite song is called Voice of Grievous Cry by a band called Galnerius. Uh, it's a cool song and it has a lot of personal meaning to me, so I like that. And I usually listen to that type of stuff when I'm queuing. It gives me a lot of energy. Chase asks, what would you be doing for a living if you weren't working in cubes? And uh, I think for me, I would most likely want to be a teacher. Uh, whether or not they want me to be a teacher is a different issue, but I think teaching is really cool. And I think I have a lot to, to offer to people who are interested in learning. And so I would probably pick that. Sam asks, what is the most memorable cubing moment you've ever had? Uh, for me, uh, there are two. Uh, the first one is, when I got the 1346 one-handed average MAR. Uh, that happened after I had a very bad US Nationals in 2012. Uh, I had a very stressful meeting um, that really shouldn't have happened. And uh, so I was really bothered by it. And it, it really threw me, threw me off track. I did really poorly in uh, Nationals. And so I went home and I practiced really, really hard. And I came back and I was able to get the record that I always wanted. And that's really important to me because the very next week I went back to school and after that point I just couldn't compete anymore. Uh, the second memory for me is actually someone else's memory but it's shared with me. It's when Mats Valk broke the 474 3x3 single world record on his uh, magnetic Valk 3. Uh, that was the first time you know the world saw a magnetic 3x3 break the world record and made me immensely proud um, because I was one of the first proponents of this technology and I remember writing at great lengths on social media explaining to people give this a chance give this a chance it's it's a good thing and it's we've come a long way from that uh, I think magnet cubes are really prevalent now and people really like them and I was really happy to be a part of that so that's it for my questions uh, I hope that answered a lot of uh, the curiosities that people have about me uh, the winner I picked for my portion of the contest is Sam, who asked me about my favorite cubing memories. Uh, the reason I like working here and what I do is I have lots of good memories, and I hope that I can continue to make them uh, with everyone's support. Uh, it's uh, It's been really cool, and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this, and stay tuned for other releases from the other staff members.